This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, uh, we've been through in the previous lectures the two different ways of calculating depreciation, straight line, reducing balance. Uh, and as I said, that's really what's important for the exam, uh, because there's not a lot of debits credits in the exam. Uh, however, to be safe, let me show you what the double entries are, how, how we actually account for it. Um, and as I did say in the previous lecture, whichever way we've calculated depreciation, that's just the calculating. Once we've got the figure, the accounting, as you'll see, uh, is exactly the same. So to show you, look at example three with me, um, Melms. Melms has a year end of 30th of June each year. And on the 1st of January 2002, he bought a car for 15,000. It's an expected life of five years with an estimated scrap value of 1,000. And our depreciation policy is to use straight line depreciation. Show the accounting entries for the first three accounting periods. So let's make a start. Let's first of all play at being bookkeeper. And on the 1st of January 2002, they buy a car for 15,000. So the double entry, a credit cash, we've paid out 15, debit a car account. Fifteen. Uh, debit the car with an asset. I said credit cash. Had we bought the car on credit, we'd credit payables. But um, whatever happens, we debit the car fifteen. That's all the bookkeeper will have done. That's all we learned how to do in the. Uh, it was the third chapter. But we've come to the end of the year, and remember the end of the year. The year end is June, so the end of the year is 30th of June 2002. And the accountant arrives uh, and has got to produce the statements. However, of course, we know that because of depreciation, although car appears on statement of financial position, we need to reduce its value by the depreciation. So we'll calculate the depreciation, depreciation expense, and how much is it going to be? Uh, well, if the two ways, this way is straight line, and so with straight line the original cost was 15, we expect a scrap value of a thousand, so a net cost of fourteen thousand. Spread over the life of five years, uh, which is fourteen divided by five, two thousand eight hundred per year. Uh, however, it wasn't bought until the first of January. And our year, I remember, is June. So in the first year, we're going to have to pro rata. We bought it on the uh, 1st of January, so January to June is six months. We'll take six twelfths of the depreciation. 1400. Uh, but remember, I did say in the earlier lecture, look out for that statement that could have been there. If they'd have said a full year's charge in the year of purchase, it would have been 2.8. Here it didn't, so we pro rata. It'll be 1,400 in the first year, but in the future years, when we've had it all year, it could be the full 2.8. Well, having calculated it, what do we want to do? Well, we want to reduce the value of the car by 1,400. And what we could do, but if you copy me, don't write this down, we could credit the car with 1400 and that would reduce the value. However, we don't. And the reason is, remember, 
Although we're going to show a lower value on the statement of financial position, we are required to show the breakdown. We're required to show what the original cost was and how much we subtracted. And the danger is after a few years, and especially if you've lots and lots of cars in the same account, doing what we've done there, you'd end up losing track of what the cost was and how much you're subtracting. And so, in fact, we leave the car account as it is showing the cost. We open up a new account called accumulated depreciation. And instead of crediting the car with 1,400, we credit accumulated depreciation. And when we come to do the statement of financial position, we'll put the two together. We'll say, ah, on the car account, there's a debit of 15, the cost. On accumulated depreciation, there's a credit of 1,400, the total depreciation. And we'll subtract one from the other and show the net value on the statement. So we'll credit accumulated. The double entry, well, the cost of what we've done, we'll debit the depreciation expense account. So credit accumulated, debit the expense. It's just that one entry. And having made the entry, now we can close off the accounts. Uh, the car, that'll appear on the statement of financial position. We leave the balance there. Uh, the accumulated depreciation, that will appear on the statement of financial position as well. We leave the balance there. And again, on the statement, under non-current assets, you'll show cost less depreciate, accumulated depreciation. You'd show a net, whatever it is, uh, 13,600. The expense account, well, like any expense, we move it to statement of profit or loss. Credit uh, the expense, debit statement of profit or loss. And that account has now zero balance ready for next year. So that's the end of the first year. Remember, that is 30th of June 2002. Am I right? Yes, that's when the first year finished. And there are the balances. No balance on the expense, but we've got those balances on the car and the accumulated. Uh, now the question asks us to do the first three periods. So let's carry on. Assuming uh, we've still got the car and we don't buy any more, next year the bookkeeper won't do anything. The bookkeeper will only record, you know, if we buy another car. So we arrive, the accountant arrives at the end of the second year, and there are the balances. But of course, we want to charge more depreciation. It's straight lines, so there's no more arithmetic to do. The second year we hold it for a full year, so it'll be 2,800. And so to reduce by another 28, exactly the same entry. Credit accumulated depreciation. There's an extra 2,800 to subtract from the value. Debit the expense. The cost in that second year. Now we close off. The cost will appear on statement of, where's the cost gone? There it is. The cost will appear on statement to financial position, so leave the balance there, a debit of 15. Uh, the balance on the accumulated is now 4,200.
Uh, that will appear on Statement of Financial Position, reducing the value of the car. On the Statement of Financial Position will be the original cost of 15000 uh, 15, less, the accumulated depreciation of 4200 Leave the balance there. Uh, the expense account, well, there's the cost of what we've done this year. Move it to Statement of Profit or Loss. Credit the expense, debit statement profit loss to eight, and again the balance is zero. So where are we up to so far? That was uh, at the end of uh, 2002, the first year. We're now at the end of 2003, the second year. Well, we're going to do one more year. So let's move on into the third year. And again, assuming that we still got the car and that we don't buy any more, the bookkeeper will do nothing. But the accountant arrives at the end of the year and we've still got the balance on cost, car, which is fine, the original cost. We've still got the balance on the accumulated, but at the end of the third year, we need more depreciation. If it was reducing balance, we'd have to do a bit more arithmetic a percent of the net value. However, because it's straight line here, uh, we know the third year will be another 2,800. And so just the one entry again, credit the accumulated, there's an extra 2,800 uh, to reduce the value. Double entry, debit the expense. And now, we close off the accounts. The cost, the balance is 15, it'll appear on the statement of financial position, leave the balance there. The accumulated depreciation uh, is now four, six, seven thousand. Uh, again, it will appear on the statement of financial position, it will reduce the value of the car. Uh, the car will appear at 15, less 7, and net 8,000. The, the expense account, again, that was this year's cost of what we've done. We'll move it to the statement of profit and loss. It appears as an expense. And there we are. And where are we up to? Uh, we depreciated for one year. The year end was June. We bought 1st of January 2002. So the first year was June 2002. We did another year. We've got to June 2003. We've now got to June 2004. But there we are. All right, so there is only that one entry and it's typed to the bottom of the page. Calculating, we've done before, straight line reducing balance. But whichever way we're using, once we've got the figure, the entry each year is always the same. Debit the expense account, credit the accumulated depreciation. Okay, that was fair enough. However, uh, clearly, there is going to come a time when that car, or machine, what was it? It was a car. There is going to come a time when the asset disappears. Uh, either we um, sell it, or it stops working, or we scrap it, or whatever. And so the last big thing we've got to deal with in this chapter is what happens when the asset eventually goes. Now, as always, to avoid things getting too long, I'm going to stop this lecture. The next lecture, though, we're going to take the same example. So make sure you've still got the figures in front of you. But we're going to deal with what happens when we dispose, sell, remove that car. But again, that's
tackle in the next lecture, the, the last big problem we've got for the time being.